Hey guys, over this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can extract information from videos, audio, or images. We're gonna be using Gemini 2.0 Flash, which is Google's newest LLM. Everyone has been talking about DeepSeek and OpenAI for the past few weeks, but none of them are really good beyond text. That's why Gemini 2.0 Flash is really groundbreaking. It has a full multimodal capability, which means you can get data from a movie, from a long PDF file, from images, or anything like that. Over this video, I'm gonna show you how you can extract data from handwritten invoices, how to build your own computer vision model, and also extract key information from long form contracts. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can then use it into your own AI agents. So enough talking, let's go ahead and let's dive into building. Oh, and real quick, if you're looking for support, I have a bunch of resources in the description below. The code that I'm gonna show you today is actually available for free. You can also book a meeting with me if you want to dive deeper into your workflow or if you have any questions about the content that we're gonna cover. All right, let's go. So like I said, Gemini 2.0 Flash is finally available to the public. The core feature that they have released is this multi-model reasoning. And let me show you what this means. Here's a bit of a better breakdown of the different capabilities. So you have the multi-model inputs that you can play around with. They're gonna be releasing soon the image output and audio output. This is the ultimate goal. We're not there yet, but today the scope of this video is gonna be about handling all sorts of inputs. The second core thing with Gemini 2.0 Flash is this super large context window of 1 million tokens. This is the equivalent of eight English novels that you're gonna be able to simply query and get very accurate information from. So more practically, if you are to analyze a super long contract or a long PDF, you're gonna be able to do that. And then a third thing which is very powerful with this model is that you can very easily configure it to return a JSON object that you're then gonna be able to use throughout the rest of your workflow or elsewhere in your application. So again, multimodal, super large context window and the ability to return a JSON output which opens up so many use cases and now we're gonna go over them. So before we dive into the code and go over the use cases, let's just play around a little bit with the Google AI Studio, which is a simpler way to interact with the model and learn about the use cases. So there are two major use cases that I'm gonna play around with here. The first one is video analyzer. Here I'm basically gonna upload the video and ask specific questions about what what's appearing on the frames. So instead of just asking questions about things that were mentioned in the video, I'm actually gonna ask things about what's on the screen. And then the second thing is gonna be about spatial understanding. So I'm gonna ask Gemini to answer questions about how many people were on this picture or how many socks are there in this picture or how many pink cupcakes or something like that. So let's start with video analyzer. So here I'm just gonna upload a video. I'm gonna show you how this works, automating AI. So this is a tutorial that I made about uh, creating a VC data analyst. I also have this tutorial on my YouTube channel if you want to play around with it. So you can see it's fairly fast. And I'm gonna ask about uh, what are the key are the metrics and values shown throughout the presentation. So now it's running and it's analyzing every single frame. So here we can see four minutes and 30 seconds. There's this value 46,781. Let's go and verify that. What was the minute? 430. 46,781, 46,781, right? Then you have 382,66, uh, which is here, uh, which is which will be hovered. So what's really impressive here is that I didn't explicitly talk about this value in the transcript. So you wouldn't find it in the transcript. It actually analyzed every single frame to find this data. So this is fairly impressive. Now let's go over to the second use case, which is spatial understanding. So I'm just gonna upload an image and I'm gonna ask Gemini to figure out how many people were on this picture. So yesterday I organized an event and I'm just gonna add the event crowd image where I'm gonna ask it to return me how many people were there. Let's try. Right, so here you can see it's basically identifying every single person. So you can obviously play around with the temperature, but you can actually very easily count and then use that data to count how many people were attending your conference. This is just my use case for yesterday, but you can imagine that there are other ideas. So here, for instance, is a picture of a, of a meal and you can ask about ingredients and it's just gonna tell you exactly, it's gonna recognize every single ingredient. So you have toast, butter, tomato, salmon, eggs, and so on. 
So yeah, incredibly impressive. Uh, maybe just a last use case here, it's gonna recognize all the socks. So it identifies that as well. So yeah, that was just to give you an idea about the potential of this LLM. Now I'm gonna show you concrete use cases and the code to actually implement that directly into your workflows. So there are three individual use cases we're gonna go over. The first one, we're gonna be analyzing an invoice and query the information. I'm gonna be querying that image. So asking about the payment terms, the, the amount or the currency. Use case number two, I'm gonna be analyzing a PDF. I'm actually gonna use a lease agreement and I will return in a structured output. So I'm gonna return in the JSON, the information like the first name and last name of the landlord, but also of the tenants. And then the third use case, we're gonna be analyzing an image, tag it, and return the output as well in a structured format using JSON. Let's hop over to Cursor now and go over the use case number one. All right, so use case number one, is a set of three steps. The first step, we are going to create an index. So if you're familiar with vector embeddings, we're actually gonna use the image and send it to Quadrant. Quadrant is just a database where we're gonna store the vectors. Step two is gonna to be to add the image into the vector database so that it's gonna actually get turned into a set of vectors. And then the last step, we're gonna be able to query the information from that vector. So let's go over it. So here is the script where I'm defining my quadrant collection, and we're just gonna call it invoice collection. And the reason I'm gonna call it invoice collection, this is entirely up to you, but this is the invoice that I'm gonna be analyzing. All of the data is like dummy data. This is my company, but we're gonna pretend that Doge from Washington is actually gonna bill Tesla and Elon Musk for an amount of $10 million for the services that they've been providing. I'm not gonna expand on that, but that's just like the, the use case I came up with then. So we're gonna create that collection for the invoice. Then we're gonna process it. So here we are defining the model of the information that we actually want to extract. So we have, we're gonna be getting the bank name, the rece receiving bank details, payment due date, and so on. Then we're gonna absurd, so adding all of the values from the image into that collection using that same embedding. So it has to be consistent with the index. All right, so now let's just go over like an example. Um, I'm gonna in initialize the Gemini uh, query tool and I'm gonna first return the output with the invoice object, right? So bank name, receiving bank details and so on. Then we're gonna query the vectorized information from the database. So what is the total amount due on the invoice? What are the payment terms? And so hopefully it's gonna answer both questions. So as you can see, it's returning the JSON output with the relevant information. So routing number, all of it is coming from the invoice. And then the total amount due to the, on the invoice is $10 million and the payment turns are seven days. So it's just kind of reusing that information. But so as you can see, you can actually query that image. So if we go back to it, so this is the amount, $10 million, payment terms, seven days, and it extracted the information about the bank. So Silicon Valley Bank, beneficiary name Tesla and so on. Perfect, so now let's hop over the second use case. So now this is use case number two. It works like in a very similar fashion. So we are just defining a set of pydantic models. So the kind of JSON output that we want to return. So here we have a contract, which is a lease agreement that I have here under PDF lease agreement. It doesn't open, but it contains several pages with all the major clauses and you're gonna, you're gonna see how this works. And then in this contract analysis, I want to extract the first last name and address of both the landlord and the tenants. So we are initializing the Gemini 2.0 flash model here. And we're gonna do two things. The first one is we're gonna ask questions about the contract. So extract both the landlord and tenant information and return it into a JSON format. And then the second thing will be to actually also analyze and come up with an analysis on it. So let's try it out. Contract analysis, let's see. Perfect, so structured data. So we have the first, we have the name of the landlord. So this guy, I am the tenant and I am sharing this apartment. And then here we have some important considerations. So it's also analyzing the contract and reviewing the different clauses, telling me about the price, whether it is fair. It's extracting information from a PDF, and then you can do whatever you want with the JSON output. So if I show you just in the code, you can just select the lease agreement object, and this could be reused if you are to analyze contracts and you want to compare the information that you get from the contract against your guidelines or policies 
So now I'm going to go over the last use case, which is going to be to use the spatial recognition. So tagging items that we see on an image and then uh, run some analysis on it. So this is the third and last use case. So here we're going to do something a bit similar with the spatial recognition example that I showed you earlier with the, from the AI Studio. We're going to be using this image and we're going to ask Gemini to spot all the um, cupcakes and return us the other objects which are not cupcakes as well. All right, so let's go over the code. Here I'm initializing the model, so G Gemini 2.0 flash. And I'm just gonna basically, to make sure that it works like in the AI studio, we're gonna be using different plot bounding boxes every time it recognizes an item with the AI to then just map it out and resize the image to make sure that everything flows consistently. You could customize this as you wish. You could pick different colors, different shapes, and also the relative sizes to the object. And then we have the basic analysis, which is going to be returning the items. And then we're going to ask also, again, with a custom prompt, analyze this image and identify the specific objects of interest. And then it's going to return a JSON array. So again, we're defining the structure of the output here, bounding inbox, where you have the set of dimensions and the labels, right? So let's try it out. Computer vision. Let's see. Cool. So this is the output that we got. So it returned all the cupcakes that it, that it identified. And it also identified the items that are individual items. So raspberries, marshmallow jars, but then you have the different cupcakes. And uh, finally, those are the detected objects. So you can just reuse, count the items, do whatever you want with it. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that was the third use case. So if we just go over the three use cases, so we did, we learned how we can analyze an invoice and an image and then ask questions about it, that image. The second use case, we analyze the contract and return key information that we structured out of that contract. And then the final use case is the one where we just identified all the cupcakes. We plotted some boxes around the identified objects and then return the list that you can just reuse later on. So yeah, three individual use cases that have a bunch of different applications. And like I said, if we think about it uh, in terms of business ideas, if you are to analyze an invoice, you could also use it with handwritten invoices. So if you want to take a picture of some of, of your invoice and then very easily transfer it uh, onto your phone or a CSV file, this is something you could do. Use case number two, obviously, if you're in the insurance industry or you work in, uh, in the legal team, you want to analyze clauses and compare them to what you're willing to accept, then you could do this automatically instead of having to sift through documents. So the context window of Gemini is the equivalent of eight books worth of documents that you can analyze and then structure the information from. And then analyzing and tagging the image, there are a bunch of use cases. If you are to do a damage report and you want to figure out the damaged items and then categorize them, you could just take a picture and do this. Because this is multimodal, even if you were to film, you could ask your AI to take a screenshot of every frame, tag and map out every single item that you filmed. So if you are on site and you want to catalog all the different items that you have or that are damaged, this is something that you could be doing. So yeah, incredibly excited about the capabilities of Gemini. And like I said, right now, they've only focused on multimodal on the input side, but they're soon going to release the output part, which means that we're going to be able to extract info from a video and then generate a new video after running some analysis in between or not. So yeah, thanks for being here. Like I said, all of the code is freely accessible on my GitHub. If you have more questions on how to set this up, you can also book a meeting with me directly. You have a link to my calendar in the description of this video. Otherwise, I will see you next week for another video about AI agents.